Book Two, Canto Seven. The Descent into Night. As from a womb obscure, he saw emerge the body and visage of a dark unseen. Hidden behind the fair outsides of life, its dangerous commerce is our suffering's cause. Its breath is a subtle poison in men's hearts. All evil starts from that. Ambiguous face, a peril haunted now the common air. The world grew full of menacing energies, and wherever turned for help or hope his eyes, in field and house. In street and camp and mart, he met the prowl and stealthy come and go of armed, disquieting, bodied influences. A march of goddess figures, dark and nude. Alarmed the air with grandiose unease. Appalling footsteps drew invisibly near. Shapes that were threats invaded the dream light, and ominous beings passed him on the road. Whose very gaze was a calamity, a charm and sweetness, sudden and formidable. Faces that raised alluring lips and eyes approached him, armed with beauty like a snare. But hid a fatal meaning in each line, and could in a moment dangerously change. But he alone discerned that screened attack. A veil upon the inner vision lay. A force was there that hid its dreadful steps. All was belied, yet thought itself the truth. All were beset, but knew not of the siege, for none could see the authors of their fall. Aware of some dark wisdom still withheld, that was the seal and warrant of this strength, he followed the track of dim, tremendous steps, returning to the night from which they came. A tract he reached, unbuilt, and owned by none. There, all could enter, but none stay for long. It was a no man's land of evil air, a crowded neighborhood, without one home. A borderland between the world and hell. There, unreality was nature's lord.
It was a space where nothing could be true, for nothing was what it had claimed to be. A high appearance wrapped a specious void. Yet nothing would confess its own pretense, even to itself, in the ambiguous heart. A vast deception was the law of things. Only by that deception they could live. An unsubstantial nihil guaranteed the falsehood of the forms this nature took and made them seem a while to be and live. A borrowed magic drew them from the void. They took a shape and stuff that was not theirs and showed a color that they could not keep. Mirrors to a phantasm of reality. Each rainbow brilliance was a splendid lie, a beauty unreal graced a glamour face. Nothing could be relied on to remain, joy nurtured tears, and good and evil proved, but never out of evil one plucked good. Love ended early in hate, delight killed with pain. Truth into falsity grew, and death ruled life. A power that laughed at the mischiefs of the world an irony that joined the world's contraries and flung them into each other's arms to strive, put a sardonic rictus on God's face. Aloof, its influence entered everywhere and left a cloven hoof mark on the breast, a twisted heart and a strange sombre smile mocked at the sinister comedy of life. Announcing the advent of a perilous form, an ominous tread softened its dire footfall that none might understand or be on guard. None heard until a dreadful grasp was close. Or else all augured a divine approach, an air of prophecy felt, a heavenly hope, listened for a gospel. What? for a new star. The fiend was visible but cloaked in light. He seemed a helping angel from the skies. He armed untruth with scripture and the law. He deceived with wisdom with virtue slew the soul and led to perdition by the heavenward path. A lavish sense he gave of power and joy and when arose the warning from within he reassured the ear with dulcet tones, 
or took the mind captive in its own net. His rigorous logic made the false seem true. Amazing the elect with holy law, he spoke as with the very voice of God. The air was full of treachery and ruse. Truth-speaking was a stratagem in that place. Ambush lurked in a smile, and peril made safety its cover, trust its entry's gate. Falsehood came laughing with the eyes of truth. Each friend might turn an enemy or spy. The hand one clasped ensleeved a dagger's stab, and an embrace could be doom's iron cage. Agony and danger stalked their trembling prey and softly spoke as to a timid friend. Attack sprang suddenly vehement and unseen. Fear leaped upon the heart at every turn and cried out with an anguished, dreadful voice. It called for one to save, but none came near. All warily walked, for death was ever close. Yet caution seemed a vain expense of care, for all that guarded proved a deadly net. And when, after long suspense, salvation came and brought a glad relief, disarming strength, it served as a smiling passage to worse fate. There was no truce and no safe place to rest. One dared not slumber or put off one's arms. It was a world of battle and surprise. All who were there lived for themselves alone. All warred against all, but with a common hate turned on the mind that sought some higher good. Truth was exiled, lest she should dare to speak and hurt the heart of darkness with her light, or bring her pride of knowledge to blaspheme the settled anarchy of established things.